Hello and welcome to phase three. Now, um, where are we? Just making sure everything's set up. I am so excited to be doing today's call with you guys. We're going to be doing brand design and I'm so excited. Um, it's going to be fantastic. This is the fun part. This is the creative part. This is you've done so much of the thinking and the processing. Um, and now we get to play and have fun. And uh, I'm really hoping that you've all had a really good chance to get through all the rest of the work. And as long as you've done all that, um, now this part will be a breeze. So something I realized that we haven't talked about and that we should have talked about in the last module um, that we're going to talk about now because I've just added it to the workbook as well. And it's something that's very important in the process of consideration of your brand in total. <laughs> and I should have remembered to put it in there before, but here we are. Um, is that we didn't discuss the name of your brand and kind of the reason behind thinking about the name of your brand. Um, it helps you to look at, um, you know, like what is, what is the brand encompassing? It's like the overall vibe of the brand, but it's also sometimes it's who you are. If it's a personal brand, if you are a, um, yeah, if you're a solo person, like, is it just your name? But what is it, you know, you've had time to think about the longevity of your brand, like the five years and then the 10 years of the brand, what's the legacy that you're trying to leave. Um, and by having that time to really think about, you know, what is the legacy that you want to leave, um, you're able to kind of look at your name and also looking at the tagline of your brand to help you get real good clarity on what it is that your your brand is from, from the get-go. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that's one of those things to consider. So let me share the page and it's just a couple of questions to think about before we get into the whole branding unit. Um, keeping in mind, so all of this stuff that I'm teaching you today is on Canva. There is a free version of Canva. There is a paid version of Canva. Canva. Um, and we, um, I really, really do recommend utilizing the paid one because there's so much, like so much, um, that you can utilize when you do pay for it. So, um, let me share the screen and we're going to get into it. Alrighty. Um, if you're watching, please say, Hey, I just want to make sure that the the comments are working. Um, also today we're doing a case study on um, one of our group's members. So I'm really, really excited to be going through the process and sharing. Oh, it's 11.11. There you go, make a wish. <laughs> All right, so looking at the name, the brand name. Have a think about your brand. What do you, do you wanna be the front man always and forever? Is your, um, uh, is your legacy your name? Um, will you have a product line or are you just going to go solo? For example, Lululemon, um, is the name Lululemon because you like, you like to make lemonade or is your company name Lulu and lemons, uh, are about freshness and wellness and your, and your company is a wellness clothing brand for women. Um, so I, I think that's really something to think about like, okay, like what, what is your name? Why is your name that particular name? So, um, the reason why I chose to brand my, um, my brand in Chloe manifest originally I had it under my own name. I also have had it under, uh, mama heart space. I've had it under the wild. She I've had it under a lot of different names. Um, and the reason why I chose Chloe manifest was one, um, I used to be very, very attached to my uh, my maiden name, um, which was Irvine. And when I transferred over to Metcalf, um, my husband's not necessarily very attached to his name, nor does he necessarily care about leaving a legacy for that name. Our legacy is our children, so we're, we're cool with that. Um, but 
manifest was a huge thing for me in the sense that I have spent a long time coming in and grounding into who I am and making my world the reality that I want it to. And so for me, being Chloe manifest, I feel like it's a way for me to be that creator energy while still being myself. (laughs) And it's all about being able to manifest and create from. Um, And it gives me an opportunity to have a name that is about being a creator, that is about creating from multiple different angles. Like I don't have to be restricted to one thing. Um, And it's all about, yeah, creation, right? So um, have a think about like, okay, some people may choose a very specific niche down name. For instance, it may be, um, let's just think, uh, something, something, something health and wellness, right? Um, and so you're going to be stuck in the health and wellness thing. Now, if you are a multi-passionate creator like myself, sticking to just the wellness field may become very, very challenging for you. Or for, for instance, like, um, maybe it's like pottery, <laughs> like maybe your brand is something, something pottery or like pottery barn. You know what I mean? Um, you're going to be more contained to a particular niche of things. Um, but if you don't see yourself sticking to a niche of things because you do, do like to bounce around a little bit, then that's fine. Um, but if you want to leave your legacy being your name, like today's um, test subject, um, then something that you could do is look at a tagline. So, um, for instance, here, uh, what a tagline is, is it just essentially like amplifies your um, your mission statement or the, the energy behind your brand. So, for instance, the example is Nike and their tagline is probably like, the most famous in the world, which is just do it. Um, and so it really helps to, it's about taking action. Do you know what I mean? Like the brand is about taking action, just going for it, like giving it your all, you know what I mean? So, um, what a tagline you could do. Um, yeah, have a think about a tagline that you could do that can really share what your mission is or what's something that you can kind of bring to the world so that people can go, okay, this is uh, the Chloe Manifest brand, but what does Chloe Manifest do? Well, um, I can't even remember. I don't think I've got a tagline. That's embarrassing. Um, But like (laughs) find a tagline. So for instance, it would be um, create from joy or, you know, express yourself. You know what I mean? Like something like that. (laughs) Find, Find a way to do that. So this is in, this will be in the updated PDF if you're accessing it. Otherwise, feel free to just have a minute and think about what your tagline could be. All right, let's get into the actual phase three, the design. I'm so excited about this. This is obviously the fun bit. If you're an artist, a creator, you love love making things, you're a bit crafty. Um, so today, building out the branding board. So um, what I'm gonna show you today in Canva is the vision board of the lovely Lisa Kingston. Um, she. Uh, like I requested last week, um, I asked for a Pinterest board. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you her Pinterest board first, talk to you a little bit about what I like about it, how it's coming together. Um, and, and how these things kind of into like how I'm seeing them weave it into lace. Um, and also giving suggestions like Lisa, you don't have to take on board from what I share, but some suggestions that I think that would be, um, you that you could utilize if you were to create a branding from particular angles okay so about the branding board um below is an example of my personal branding board it, your next step is to start building out and sourcing your textures fonts symbols and colors um so branding identity is chloe manifest the symbol um the sun is the symbol of expression light and joy and we're going to get into symbolism and all of that very soon um lemon um the color I liked the lemons as a textured background because it was an opportunity to look at the zest of life, making lemons from lemonade. Um, And then the house is where I focus a lot of my content, building, designing, connecting with the home, also connecting with the home of the self, um, because, you know, that's where we all start from. 
Um, green, uh, the colors are green and black for grounding, yellow slash orange and peach for lightness. These are polarizing. I also choose to use a stark white background to give more organic feeling. I think I meant to write starchy white. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, as a brand, my core essence is self-expression through creativity, but my core values are around home and value. Fa family followed by health in the form of wellness um and so resources to build your branding board so i recommend you paying for canva for the elements that you can use in your branding board um unsplash is where you find will find a lot of copyright free photos that you can utilize on your social media um, and utilizing pinterest to look up aesthetics um and then in canva i'm going to teach you how to use the eyedropper tool today so that you can match up your photos and create a really cohesive brand um, color palette. Okay. So let's have a look at Lisa's Pinterest board. Um, I really freaking love the color story here. Um, as a fellow Aussie, it's also really nice to see, like, like to build something around these like Australian colors because a lot of my clients are, are usually not from Australia. So that's also lovely. Um, so can anyone note the color story here? Like what I'm seeing, I'm seeing loads of beautiful burnt oranges, um, browns, obviously some beautiful greens. Um, but a part of the color story that I'm also picking up on is this really beautiful light blue. If we have a look here um, in this imagery, we've got these beautiful, like the sky is just like crisp and beautiful. So um, the three, keywords when I was building out the mood board that I really came across that I felt was um, it was cozy bohemian outback <laughs> and I love I love love loved um, I love that like vibe of like this space for like um, heal outback healing basically um, so Lisa's Lisa's uh, business is a health and wellness a holistic health and wellness brand um, and I love the idea of potentially like really throwing it into like really amping up the Aussie about it because I don't think there's enough, um, enough Australian example, like, like true Aussie type vibes. So I'm also noticing here, she's got a lot of like cozy knits, um, and we've got a lot of like floral patterns, a lot of also graphic type. Um, if you look at the rug here, we've got a very, um, yeah, a very kind of, I don't know, like tribal, I think tribal would be the word, um, tribal type rug. Um, but also like, you know, whilst it's very Australian, there's a lot of like worldly influences here. Like, and I think that's what Bohemian is really, really known for is like that worldly type energy. I almost, it almost feels to me like a, um, Aussie Woodstock vibe, <laughs> do you know? So, um, what I loved about all of this was that we already have a cohesive color story of oranges, like very, very light pale blue. So like, instead of utilizing a white, we could utilize like a pale blue, but like that is almost like white, um, instead of using whites, um, we've got a lot of these beautiful avocado greens, um, which um, like blending between the yellows and the, the very soft green. Um, I love that she's put this little mood board here of the Ar Arcana Den. I love that it's got these options for fonts that she really enjoys, um, which does lead to more of that Woodstock type vibe. Um, and even when you look at their color palette here, like they're utilizing like a gray, um, so like a kind of a gray undertone, it's got a warmer tone to it rather than white. Um, okay. So what I've done, so what you can do is you can click, grab and drag over to your Canva. So when you do that, let me show you, I'll grab this one. Click, move it over here and then drop it into the side of Canva bloop, and it will upload it, which I've already uploaded that one, but Hey, why not? Um, okay. So this is the mood board that I've kind of pulled together and I want to show you how you can utilize the color dropper, 
um, and how you can find a cohesive color palette utilizing the, um, the color dropper, which is really fun. Okay, so click on, so along here I've picked out some circles. So if you go up to elements, um, and then recently used, I've got a circle. So you just click on a circle and then you've automatically got a color circle. Um, and that's what I've utilized here. So we're clicking on our, oh, go away, go away, go away. Why? Why does, there we go, okay, <laughs> sorry. All right, so what we do is we're gonna utilize clicking on our color, then we're gonna come up to, uh, we click on our circle, we come up to color, then we're gonna come down here. We've got our choice of colors here, but we're gonna come down to photo colors. So you can use here, you could come over here and select your eyedropper and find a color and like click, bloop, there you go. Um, but we don't want that color. So photo colors, this is where we're gonna come. So having a look here, we've got all these colors and these are all the photos that we have already imported into our document. So, um, Yes, it's very handy being able to <laughs> drop and, and just like slide it over and put it in there. Um, so these are all our beautiful colors that have come out of here. Look at how many, like you've got a lot of like repeating like warm burnt oranges, um, but we've also got these beautiful blues. So see here, this one's a blue undertone. Another thing to note is that when you go over your little colors here, see how we've got a, a color, um, like a hash, um, the hash with the numbers and letters, that is your color code. So if you are trying to put it into a website, that's the color code for that exact color, if you're looking for it. So, um, so what I'm thinking here, I'm really loving, I'm thinking, where are we? Yeah, no, I like that one. And then we're going to choose, I think, um, that one. And then we've got, I particularly want this green because it helps to just kind of give a little bit more of a um, depth to it. I'm going to copy and then I'm going to bring it down to this one. Now, I actually want to add another color. Feel like we need one more but I want like another um, I feel like we need another warm tone maybe hmm. let's have a look Now that I'm looking at that one, I don't like that color. It's too gray. I feel like I need, it needs just a little bit more. Yeah. Now these are like very rough, <laughs> very rough color palette. I almost feel like there needs to be more of a yellow tone. All right, maybe it's this one. Maybe it's that one. Let's have a look. I want like a mustard yellow. Hmm. All right, so that's like a rough, like this is a very rough one, right? So um, now that we've kind of selected some colors, I'll probably jig around with it and work it out. Um, on the, I want you to kind of bring up uh, like a brain dump. So the, the reason why I like these ones is that 
you can really, really see the color tones. Unless we just switch it over straight to a blue rather than a yellow. Another option instead of the blue. So I'm going to color drop and then I want to. Nope, don't do that yet. Nope, don't do that. Don't do that. All right, I want to zoom in so I can do it. So I can get the right one. All right, color dropper. Let me show you how to use a color dropper. All right, grab your color dropper. Tello. There we go. And then we bring it over here. And we've got, look at that. So if we look nice and close here, we've got a few different options in colors. And I want like a really nice. Oh, that doesn't look, nope, they're cream. Blah, we don't want cream. That's more grey. That's more grey. Okay. What if we just threw in a blue like that for funsies, huh? See what happens. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, like as we start to change through our different colours, like they're radically shifting, like the feeling. Like I don't know. I get a feeling. That's how I select colours. Like I can feel in my body. Like is that the right colour or is that not the right colour? Um. Why not? Okay. So here's a color palette that we've kind of got going on here. Maybe it's the green that's wrong. I don't know. There's something. There's something, but I don't know what it is yet. Anyway, but so see how we've drawn these colors from... Oh yeah, that's already better. So just like taking your, your picture of inspiration, drawing out the different colors you got. Um, and even this one, that was all right. We want a dropper, let's take it from the trees. Yes. That's a more Australian green, don't you think? Okay. So these are some color, like some color palettes. So now coming up here, why did you not change up there? Well, in that case, goodbye, you guys. Copy. Paste. Alright, so. Zoom back out again. So, here's a kind of colour pattern going on here. Um, so, I kind of selected out some fonts before. So, these colour palettes to me represent the sky, the plants, the earth. And then we've got our like less white white although we probably could just go for a straight up white but it's kind of hard to see in the background when we're playing around with the actual thing we'll know so um i was playing around with this idea of like what fonts are we going to be working with um so this one is called awesome lathuska <laughs> um and what i liked about it is that to me it kind of had that like slightly bohemian vibe but it felt a little bit more upscale because when I was looking at Lisa's Pinterest board she's got a couple of like wellness type spa vibes and to me that automatically feels a little bit more upscale um, rather than the straight up um, you know like if she had like an outback camping type gal type thing um, then maybe not so much but I really do feel like a lot of the things that I'm seeing here seem very clean, very um, like pristine vibes. I mean, like that is Pinterest for you. But, uh, you know, even looking at this lady here, like she feels kind of a bit more upscale. I don't know how to put it. There's just a vibe. She's got this upscale, like even here, the trend spotter. <laughs> it's trendy, you know what I mean? But like, it's cool, but it's like high class cool. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's just a vibe. I don't know how to explain it. Sometimes you just got to feel into it. Um, you got to feel what's going on. So I feel like this particular one is a up, like a high class version rather than the more like the full on bohemian vibe of the, um, of where, where did it go? This one here. 
Um, it feels more like an upscale version of this. This feels very American hippie vibe. I want to go, like I said before, Aussie Woodstock vibe um, without it being bogan. Because like sometimes with Aussie stuff, like we don't want it. Yeah, we don't want it to come over bogan. And I do know a lot like, you know, I, I know a lot of Australians when they invest, like when they invest in brand name things they will pay good money for it um and it and the brand like brands over here really become they become a thing they become a cultural thing um you know and you look at things like the akubra you look at things like uh now what's the one that's got the big horns on it um i feel like to look up here let's let's have a quick look Aussie. I mean, like, you look at Billabong and stuff like that. Um, R.M. Williams, that's what I'm talking about. So R.M. Williams, like, a really, really, really big um, brand name uh, that people really do invest in just purely because of, you know, it's classy, It like, it reads well. So I like this particular font because it reads well and it feels, it's got that slight movement in it that does make it feel a little bit like laid back enough. It's like, it's like, I've got my shit together, but I am fun. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna duplicate that. Let's bring it down here. I'm gonna throw it into, I'm gonna pick one of our colors here. So, so like, how beautiful does that read? Like, if you put that on some merch, man, like that's gonna look so good. Okay, so as I was as I was um, tuning into Lisa's brand, um, this thing that kept coming up, and like I kept so I, whenever I do branding work for people, I often like get this like vision come through my mind on like the brand itself and its potential and all of that 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 would come up. So with Lisa's brand, as I was tuning in, what came up for me was like, they kept calling it the house of healing. Um, and so it was all about like this, and I saw like an outback type house. I've seen like a pair of like Rossi boots. Um, I've seen like, like the Akubra hats, but it's like the more like cool, um, cool ones. Okay, so where were we? Um, yeah, when I was shooting into Lisa's branding, I got the House of Healing um, and I saw like an Outback house um, with like some, uh, with like red dirt underneath it with a black building, um, like a black sketchy building. Or I saw it with this particular like, you know, like a little hat like this guy. Excuse me. Um, you know, like this kind of thing. Um, you know, not necessarily that hat, it's the wrong hat, but <laughs> like that kind of vibe. Um, or let's see, out back house sketch. I don't know if we've come across the right one. Um, So like some kind of little like outback house type thing, um, like that. <laughs> you got to use your imagination. They don't have the right one. I've disappeared again. Oh my goodness. Right.
Um, or I did see... <laughs> okay, so it's just dropping in and out. Um, I did think also you could do a pair of like Rossi boots or something like that. Um, this is obviously the wrong boot again. But like finding yourself like a pair of Aussie boots or something like that. Um, either way, let's do... Um, I want to do you in the Bluton this time. Um, so yeah, I just kept getting House of Healing and it was like branded like an Outback House. <laughs> Alright, so that's what I'm feeling. Also, the reason why I chose this one called Ovo, um, that particular, like, font? Oh, yeah, yeah, we could do um, Uluru. Let's try that one. As far as I'm aware, it's not trademarked to use Uluru. You've got to think about those things. Um, so yeah, so it's like House of Healing. Um, so that's the vibe. That's the vibe that I was getting and that's the tagline that I kept getting. Um, so that would be, I think, a really beautiful way to kind of bring all that together. Also like looking at like House of Healing um, when it comes to like a wellness brand or whatnot, it would be a great way for you to kind of go like Lisa Kingston in itself feels like it could very well be um, not just a personal brand. It does feel like it could potentially hold that energy of um, you know, like an Outback clothing brand, <laughs> truly. <laughs> um, but like House of Healing, like, you know, I can see it bringing, like infusing together, like, you know, yoga mats or, um, like Outback drink bottles. Do you know what I mean? Like, like a proper, like a proper drink bottle. I'm not talking about like a plastic bottle. I'm talking like, you know, like a steel type, um, drink bottle with like your branding colors on it. Um, you know, if you were to say for you, you're a YouTuber, like utilizing that would be a fantastic, um, you know, coming out with a line of merch that went along with your branding. Um, that would, yeah, it would translate really well, I think, into um, being a merch slash clothing wellness stuff brand as well as your actual brand itself. So um, that or like, you know, say for instance, you were, you were a foodie and you did do food stuff, um, creating like a line of like, you know, healthy eats, healthy Aussie inspired eats, um, that are vegan, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, because obviously like your core values are health and wellness and family. And so like, what better than to like create stuff that really focuses in and around, um, eating together. It's a great way to look at it. Okay. So where are we at? We have done, we're looking at typography, why these ones now, for instance, if we change Lisa's font her top font say for instance too because I wanted something that was kind of vintage and retro but if I changed it to this particular font have a look at this one if I changed it I need to zoom in that's too far away if I changed it to Lisa Kingston in the font that is a bit more 1920s I believe it changed the changes the entire vibe of how things come across like and then if we go see like like who is Lisa Kingston and what is the house of healing <laughs> Whereas if we reverse that and bring back our, come back, our other font, it really does have that high class, earthy vibe to it. Um, and this particular font is going to translate well onto pretty much anything from, um, yeah, from, from shirts to if you're doing a journal, like all those things, um, you know, it's going to translate really, really well. I also love the idea of doing like a little sketch rather than... Um, and at the minute that does not look like Uluru, that just looks like a weird square. Let's try. You gonna give that one to me? No, where'd you go? Okay. That's a little bit more uluru -y. Okay. So, like, playing around with your fonts and stuff is really gonna determine, um, what vibe you're giving out. And also, like, make sure it's readable. <laughs> That's really important. Okay, where are we? Let's get back into... All right, so we've learned how to use our eyedropper. Um, building out your branding board colors. So this is something that I really wanted to talk about. And we're gonna go into a bit more into depth on how all of this kind of works. Um, okay, 
So we're looking at different colors. So when you're looking at colors, you want to look at what these colors symbolize. Um, and you can utilize that as a way to, to kind of connect back. Now, with Lisa's one, she had a very clear color story in her mood board and a clear vibe there already. Like we could see what it is. So we didn't really have to think too much about this. Um, but if you're going from scratch and you just not really totally sure on any of anything, this might be a great way to inspire you in the process of creating your mood board. So um, here's a short version of the rainbow colors. So you can kind of look at the color meaning and the symbolism. Um, something that I think that's really cool to look at. So previously, obviously in my branding, before I was doing this particular method of branding, um, I was doing um, the work of, of codes and that is essentially the work of symbolism and sigils. And, um, you know, I think brands themselves have an opportunity to create something pretty magical and color, like when you look at color theory, like color has effect on our psyche and on our emotions. Um, and so also, so do symbols, like different symbols mean different things. Um, so when we look here, we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So if you look at violet, for instance, um, royalty, luxury, creativity, magic, it's a color often associated with spirituality and represents balance between the physical and the spiritual realms. Um, then we've got up here, we've got blue, tranquility, trust, loyalty, depth. Um, it can be represented by calmness and it's often associated with the, ski, the sea and sky. So if we look back at um, what we've done for uh, Lisa's branding, if we look at the blue um, that we've chosen, it very much gives that vibe of tranquility and trust. And also like when it comes to family and as a family unit, um, loyalty is such an important, an important thing. Um, then we can look at green as nature, growth, harmony, fertility, renewal, abundance, connection to the natural world. Also another color that we've utilized. Then we have orange um, in her, um, like a burnt orange in her color story, which is creativity, enthusiasm, warmth, optimism. It is a color that combines the energy of red and yellow. So um, red, we've got passion, love, energy, strength, and courage. So it brings that like really passionate energy whilst also bringing the energies of joy and happiness and intellect, which is yellow. So it's that beautiful blend between the two. Um, so the next thing is looking at shapes. So if I was to go back and have a look at um, uh, Lisa's branding, um, we've got these different shapes here that we could look at now. Growth, evolution, a cyclic nature, journey, progress. Um, I think we could maybe even just for funsies, um, let's grab spiral. So maybe we could do spiral. And I feel like this one is very um, Australian vibes. Makes me think of like the dot paintings. And then if we need it. All right. And then I want to So you can kind of see here, can you see, can you see it kind of coming together? Can you see like, see the vibes that we're pulling in here? It's kind of like high class, but it's got a vibe of healing. It's got a vibe of like, oops, <laughs> Lisa, are you following me? <laughs> um, so yeah, we've got like these vibes coming together here where it's like got the spiral, it's all about healing, wellness, um, whilst at the same time being connected to like the earth, creation, energy, tranquility, all those vibes. Also cool, you're getting the vibes. We love this, we love this. Okay, so um, as we zoom out now, we can kind of see this all kind of coming together. So this is like our, te our little test one here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, take this swatch and I'm gonna copy and I'm going to open up my mood board design here so we can start putting this in. All right, we're going to, I'm going to duplicate and let's start pulling in. Yeah. Oh, 
because start filling in your board. All right, so we've got here. Where did we go? Come back. All right, so we've got here. You can group it together, so now it's all locked. Something, something to note is that you can do that. All right, copy. Where did it go? Okay, copy. And this one I've just got, it's a pre-made kit. It's pretty easy to, to put together. So this is our overall logo, which you would put into its own document, by the way, and save. Then we want to go color elements, that one. We've got, that seems to be the colors we've kind of pulled together. I mean, we can utilize blue, <laughs> that's all right too. Um, uploads. So we're going to, I really like this one, even though it's, come on. All right. No, what we want, my bad, what we want in our um, move board, we're going to go to, I'm going to show you Unsplash, unsplash.com. And then you just type in Australia Outback. So all of these ones through here are your, like, um, what would you call it? Like. My brain's forgetting now. Where well, you don't have to pay for them because they're free to use. They're uncopyrighted. <laughs> That's what I mean. They're uncopyrighted. So you can utilize these as like... Oh, I love this one. Okay. So thanks, Finn. <laughs> um, and even this one. So you can utilize these ones as... Um... Wow. You can utilize these on your website. You can utilize these on... Um, on your social media um, it is nice to be able to like you can always say thank you copy their link and then people can access it if you want to do that um, but you don't have to where did we go okay so upload files you can select multiple and open them all this bit's a little bit finicky. Hopefully it's not too boring to watch. <laughs> um, now that it's uploaded. So thankfully this one here and this one here are very similar in color story. Um, funsies why not no need to read that one and then I feel like I want to add let's come back here and see what we can do um See if I can find one that's more of the color story that we want. Um, 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 um. All right, well, let's say no, healing cozy. I think maybe See, these are all very stereotypical. This is me being silly about being <laughs> I don't like it when things look all the same. Um Yay, I like this one better because it's got a shell. Okay. Thank you, Content Pixie. Where are we? 
Okay, come back. Alright, upload files. <laughs> okay. Alright, so. So this is kind of like the vibe that we got going on here. Um, now, what was our font? That one. Our backward stock <laughs> it's our vibe and we'll remove this one we want elements we'll go let's just take that one for now because i like that spiral vibe feels very australiana vibes okay so there you go lisa that's that's what we've kind of pulled together for your um your mood board um so that's kind of how you go about it that's that's the process i'm just trying to see what else have we got here uh branding language okay so also, when you are working on your branding and we're talking here about um, we're talking about like how you speak on your social media. Um, let me just double check that you guys are still following because um, my computer is glitching. Thank you, Mercury Retrograde. Um, so the now that you got your mood board kind of hashed out oh my coffee's getting cold um now that you have your mood board hashed out um you can kind of get that vibe of like that sense of freedom that sense of healing um and it all kind of I keep clicking on that one i don't need that one um it's all kind of coming together we want to start looking at language and we want to start talking about like what um oh well we've talked about brand font um and so once you've looked at your brand font and stuff it's like we're talking about like is your language to is your language very proper is your language very relaxed is your language um is your language uh, is your brand's symbol shapes and imagery like what do they represent what do they mean to you um what are your brand colors and what do they represent all of these things are a part of how your your brand is communicating um, out in the world. Um, for example, here is an example of um, <laughs> oh good. Uh, how um, here are some examples of brand languages. So we've got IKEA. Um, IKEA's website uses clear and straightforward language to describe their affordable and stylish furniture, their social media uh, posts are friendly and relatable tone, sharing creative homes and decor ideas. Um, in store, you'll find informative signage and helpful comfort customer service and practical approach. So they're very, um, they feel kind of homey. And I think that's why people like going there. Like you go there, you have a meal, you sit down, um, you know, there's nothing to, um, you know, it's not like, Raw, buy some furniture do you know what I mean like there's this whole approach of like hey come in get cozy see what you like see you know kind of laid back like you want this you got this like if not come back and have another meal like it gives you that I guess it would be that huga feel um then you're looking at say for instance Tony Robbins Tony Robbins's website use power uses powerful inspiring language to promote his life-changing seminars um and uh, his coaching programs, his social media posts have motivating and an energetic tone, sharing success stories and empowerment stuff. So it's all like bam, bam, bam. Um, also, I also find his uh, like his branding to be quite masculine, like strength and power to it. Um, and in his live events, you'll experience Tony's dynamic presence, engaging storyteller, telling, uh, transformative teachings, providing life enhancing, experiencing personal growth and development so he's got that like um inspiring and um like that feeling of like almost like you're lifting weights but like effortlessly <laughs> about his brand um lisa says her brand language would be informative and motivating so um and i think that that in your font it comes across like kind of wistfully like easy to go easy to go um, but at the same time, like very like straightforward and easy to easy to read. Um, 
Now, I would say, Lisa, because one of your core values is home, um, make sure that when you are building out your brand language and how things kind of come across, um, if home is still a very, very important value to you, make sure that when people come to, say, your social media or your website, they feel connected to the home. They feel connected in the sense of like, hey, I want to be here. Do you know what I mean? It's like that sense of like, I want to be here. When I was um, like as over the years in the process of, of being on social media and having that, you know, my 17 year old self was like the first time I had social media was when I was 17. Um, and I remember setting up a Facebook account <laughs> at school. And then as I grew older, like starting to think, well, how do I want to make other people feel? when I'm online? How do I want people to receive my stuff? Because I would hate to be adding to the noise of people's lives. Um, and that's something that's really important to me is to make people, people feel welcome or make people feel like they are in a safe space or that they are in a space where they can just be themselves. And so to me, it's really important that, um, that my brand language or how I show up in online, um, adds to giving value to people's news feeds rather than being more noise. So um, I love that you're informative and motivating and that's awesome. So maybe like when you are online, you want to share some motivational quotes um, or like some, but like make sure it really comes from like that you feel in it. Don't just, I think it's so important that people don't just post for the sake of posting anymore. Like I think that just be, when you, when you, when you have the energy behind the things that you're posting to be like, oh, I have to just post. I think that if you can come from a space of feeling like I'm feeling inspired and so I'm going to post this today or I'm feeling inspired to create and work today. So let's be creative and let's work today. I really hope you guys can't hear the monkeys outside. Um, <laughs> like, so really looking at those things, looking at how, um, how you make people feel. Um, and how, and the intention behind what you're posting, right? Super important. Um, and you know, when you are posting online, yeah, like I said, post, post because you feel like, I feel grateful that I can show up. And, and if you feel like you do need to post, take a minute to ask yourself, like, why do I need to post? And also how can I, how can I shift my energy before I hit post? Because you've got to realize like, if you're sending out something that's blah, um, the likelihood of people like responding to it, like blah, you know, unless you post, Hey, like feeling blah <laughs> and, um, it's okay to have a down day. Like I feel like sometimes I have a down day and I just need to post, Hey, I'm having a bad, a, a bad down day. Um, but maybe you can post something that is going to like, that like helps you feel a little less down. Do you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, really look at like how you're posting, how you're showing up and um, also why, <laughs> you know, why are you showing up this way? Um, okay. So once you've done, once you've looked at all these things, looked at your brand language and all of that jazz, um, then you've got this opportunity to then create your mission and vision statements um, and putting your brand, putting in your brand name, your tagline, your, your font body selections, um, putting in any symbols that come up for you, um, and then put it all together. So, well, that's, that's that for, to, for today. Hopefully it wasn't too all over the place. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to, to ask. Um, and I think that's all for today. Next week, we're going to do our final week and I'm going to show you two things. One, I'm going to show you how to outfit a basic website with your branding. Now that you've selected some brand stuff, how can we pull it all together on a website? And then the other thing that we're going to be doing next week is I want to show you how you can create an easy PDF, um, for you, for your branding, um, or like something that you can essentially like turn into merch. So that'll be next week. Um, as a little bonus, it doesn't, there isn't any more in the workbook to do, but it's just more of a, a um, an additional masterclass that you can just kind of look at and see. And hopefully you've now built out your cohesive branding. Um, 
so the cats are coming in. Um, cohesive branding and um, yeah, it, this week in the group, if you have any questions that you would like answered next week about the branding, about anything so far, um, feel free to leave them and I will answer them in the next live and um, as a way to wrap it all up. So thanks guys. I've really enjoyed today. Hopefully the video hasn't been too glitchy and I will see you all next time. Bye.